On one side, you have the startup, Tesla. They're all electric vehicles, powerful, fast, fun, exciting, over-the-air updates. And they, they don't do that. They don't make any noise. And then you have Ford. So the Mach-E has been announced. I really don't like that name. The Mustang, the new electric Mustang has been announced and I'm actually pretty excited about it. This thing is a legit competitor to Tesla's Model Y. And this is the first time we're seeing an actual competitor pretty directly with a Tesla car. So the first thing you might think when I say that is the Porsche Taycan, but uh, that thing was kind of competing with the Model S. It's very fast and it looks like a really nice car, but it was like over double the price of a Model S and just ever so slightly slower. Um, gonna get a lot in the comments about that, but it's true. So just really quick, the base specs of both the Mustang and the Model Y in the low end, comparing the Tesla to the Ford, we have the Mustang at 43,895, whereas the Model Y starts at 43,000. Of course, all the Model Y info can change because it's not out yet. And I guess that's true for the Mustang as well, but Ford is announcing all of this saying this is gonna be the price. Uh, they both go 230 miles on the standard range. Ford said the zero to 60 for the low end Mustang is in the mid five seconds, whereas the Model Y on Tesla's page, the standard range plus is 5.9 seconds. So that's just a bit slower than the Ford if they are mid five seconds, let's say 5.5 .5 or 5.6, which would be really interesting, but I'm gonna be honest, I think Tesla would update that to at least match the Ford, if not beat it before the Model Y is released. The biggest difference here is by the time the Model Y comes out, Tesla will be out of federal tax credits, whereas Ford will still be getting the full $7,500 off of the buying price. So you can effectively subtract $7,500 from whatever price you're gonna pay for that Ford. The range is pretty interesting. It's 280 miles on this Performance Model Y versus the Mustang GT is only 235 miles, so much less efficient for the performance on Ford's side. Now from the exterior, they both look pretty similar to me. I really like the look of the Model Y. I know it's a little controversial, but uh, I think I'm used to it from my Model 3. It just looks a little kind of fatter and taller, and I do really like it. On Ford's side, I really actually do like the look of the Mustang. Uh, the front, the nose, is, is very strange, and I really don't like that weird Mustang symbol on the front, but of course, just a matter of taste. The rest of the car, I think, looks fine. I think some people will find it a little bulbous -y, but that's all right. Uh, I think it's looking pretty good. Going to the inside of the Mustang, you can tell they've been inspired by Tesla on this. They got the big touchscreen in the middle, and then they also have one touchscreen in front of the driver. During the presentation of the Mustang, they actually kind of took a little shot at Tesla saying something along the lines of, we know people like the information in front of them, so we put it there unlike others. Uh, but one thing they said is, we know people don't want to take their eyes off the road, so we put this screen in front of you. Yeah, uh, really, if they don't want you to take your eyes off the road, they'd put a HUD. Not that big of a deal, though. I, I kind of get what they're going for, but, you know, to look down at the little screen in your face, you have to take your eyes off the road. That's fine. Uh, that'll be good for people that are not used to kind of these drastic changes. I think this is where Ford is looking to pull in some of the more traditional car buyers with things that are not gonna shock them so much. Like if you hop in the Model 3 for the first time, there's no buttons, there's nothing in front of you, it's just a giant screen in the middle and kinda can be a little overwhelming for people even though anyone that I've had drive the car gets used to it within seconds. The only thing that I kinda noticed is the main screen looks really flat to the point where it would be angled strange. Um, I would assume this is not the case and the pictures just are showing it weird because, you know, these guys designed it. They're not going to make it hard to use. Ford does seem to have a pretty nice uh, system there for controlling the car. All voice controlled. You can use that to go to destinations and a one up on Tesla. You can actually set routes. You can set waypoints uh, on the way to where you're going. So you say, you know, the example they used is they were going to Jay Leno's garage and then they said they wanted to stop and get coffee on the way. They did that all by voice and the system automatically did it. That's awesome. They did talk about over the air updates. I'm skeptical. I'm going to be honest. I'm skeptical they'll be as good as Tesla's. You know, uh, you have kind of the Elon factor where this guy's on Twitter all the time and you got somebody on Twitter saying, uh, hey, uh, these chimes are a little loud. Could you do something about that? And Elon just goes, okay. And, and before you know it, a few weeks later, you have a software update and now your car's chimes are quieter just because some guy tweeted it. So driver assist features, this is kind of interesting. Ford said that the uh, middle and top 
trims are going to come with the hardware needed for these driver assistance systems that will let you go hands-free, is what they said. Um, they have driver monitoring, like some lasers and stuff in the steering wheel to look at your eyes, but it's not active yet. It will be active at a future date, so that's pretty strange to me. Um, two things are strange about that. Uh, it's in there, but it's not activated. And I guess Tesla kind of does this to an extent, you know, they're telling us, oh, it'll do all these stoplights and stop signs, but it doesn't yet. Uh, it's coming, but it is at least active in some capacity. Um, and on the lowest trim, I guess it, you don't get the hardware for that. So that's pretty strange. And nobody knows if you'll have to pay more to enable those features once they're available. As far as charging goes, I personally am not all that concerned with charging for anybody uh, because you can almost always charge at home. It's my opinion, don't kill me. If you can't charge at home or work, you probably shouldn't have an electric vehicle. That's one of the best parts about owning one is waking up every day and having a full battery. Ford advertised their charging infrastructure. That's, you know, just the public available chargers. Uh, they said there's over 12,000 chargers available and talked about adding, I think they said 47 miles of range in 10 minutes, which is, you know, a bit slower than Tesla, but not that big of a deal. And again, uh, I think they said that 80% of charging is done at home, which I would be surprised if it's not more than that. Uh, I personally never charge outside of home ever, unless I want some free miles from a supercharger, then I'll force myself to go to one. And the last interesting point about the batteries, the Ford Mach-E has a 100 kilowatt hour battery approximately in the long range version and the short range version has a 75 kilowatt hour battery and why that's interesting is the model y's long range version is 75 kilowatt hours their short range is closer to 50 53 something like that kilowatt hours so tesla is still by far the king of efficiency which is why they've had such an advantage over everybody else and it's just interesting to see that trend continue with this new ford vehicle if you're concerned with built-in America products, this is not one, so still a big advantage Tesla has over the other auto manufacturers. Most of Tesla's cars are built in the US, pretty much everything is done here. Uh, Ford is building these in Mexico, so I'm not gonna comment too much on that, but just so you know, that's uh, where they're being built. Another feature that Ford is bringing uh, that is very similar to Tesla on the Model 3 is the phone key. Um, so you'll be able to do, it sounds like all the same stuff as you can with the Tesla app. So you can, well, not summon, I didn't hear anything about summon, um, but you can turn the car on, you can lock it, you can control your climate. It works as your key. So as you walk up to the car, it just automatically unlocks. Um, so that sounds like a really good experience. I've loved that on my car. I've had zero issues with phone key. Um, I know when the Model 3 first came out, there were some problems, you know, it was not connecting or whatever, but Tesla fixed all of that, uh, again, with over the air software updates. So we're all good there. So probably the biggest concern of electric vehicles is their battery. As long as Ford has a pretty good warranty, which it looks like 100,000 miles in eight years. Uh, so not bad, a little worse than Tesla's warranty on their long range, which is 120,000 miles, eight years. The short range, uh, this is a Model 3 at least, is the same as Ford, 100,000 miles in eight years. Um, but it looks like LG Chem will be making these batteries which is fine. Uh, they make batteries for some other electric vehicles as well. I think they make them for the Bolt. But to this day, it seems nobody's batteries are quite as good as Tesla's. I think actually in the Bolt, the batteries are holding up very well. I don't think there's been many problems with those, uh, but time will tell. And this isn't all that important until your warranty runs out, but they do have cells, it looks like. I just found this article on the Detroit News that says there's 288 lithium ion cells in the standard range pack and 376 cells in the extended range pack. So that's good. They're going for the cells kind of like Tesla does. They're not doing the pouches, uh, which is what GM does and like the Leaf and things like that. They have pouch batteries. Each company is going to have advantages. So Tesla has, of course, much more experience with electric cars, electric vehicles. But I got to imagine Ford has been doing their research here in the background for years and years and years. The difference is they're just a lot quieter. Now, one of the big advantages I think Ford is going to have is service. So this is a big complaint that people have with Tesla. And I personally haven't had any issues. Gotten mobile service to come out uh, two separate times. One time just to swap my tires. And the other time I had a door handle fixed that was sticking from when I picked up. Uh, but they came to my work and they came to my house and they did that stuff and I didn't have to do anything special. Um, I don't think Ford is going to have anything like that. And that's uh, probably a plus on the service side of Tesla. But Tesla does have a problem with uh, parts. It often takes a very long time for Tesla parts to come in. Um, but you know, this is a brand new car for Ford, so we can't say that they won't have the same problem. And who has had a good time going into a dealership, right, and uh, having a car worked on? I personally have no Tesla service centers in Michigan because Tesla is not allowed to build them here. If I need service that mobile service can't handle, I have to go to Toledo, Ohio, which is about an hour and a half away. So that's not, you know, very convenient for me. 
Luckily, my car's never needed anything though, so let's hope it stays that way. Overall, no matter what happens, Tesla is winning here. And the reason for that is their goal is to transition the world to sustainable transport. And by Ford coming out with this car, uh, Tesla's doing what they wanted. They want to compete. They made awesome cars despite them being electric. They didn't push electric cars. They pushed awesome cars that just happened to be electric. And now you see the other companies are coming out and having to compete. You know, you had the Chevy Bolt, and that's what people were comparing the Model 3 to, but only because it's electric. There's really nothing else to compare. It's a lot slower. It looks like a little box. Um, it doesn't have any driver assistance features besides like cruise control. It doesn't have adaptive cruise control. It doesn't have lane keep, any of that. It's just electric. That's really the only comparison. And this is a true competitor, a similar price, similar specs. I mean, you know, we've had other electric cars that have similar range to the Tesla, but then they're way more expensive or a similar price to the Tesla, but then their range isn't as good. They're missing features, all those types of things. So it's really exciting that I've had a couple of Fords before and I liked the cars. They did fine for me. I know everybody has their favorite, you know, company they want to stick up for, um, but I am super excited about this and it's, it's good news. It's good news for everybody. And I could see myself with one of these um, if it wasn't for the over the air updates, that's still the point I'm most skeptical on. Ford says they have them, uh, but I just, I don't think it's going to be the same as Tesla. And I mean, I have no reason to think that maybe Ford will do just as good of a job, but I hope I'm wrong. I hope that Ford like hits this out of the park over the air updates are making the cars faster. Just like Tesla, they're bringing new features like dog mode and sentry mode and all this crazy stuff. Um, so let's just hope that that Ford really does a good job with this. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Overall, I'm really excited about this. It's still a little expensive for me, but if I could afford the car, I would highly consider it. I really would. This looks like a great car after it's been out for you know a year, a few months or something, and I see that number one, the OTA, the, the over-the-air software updates are really killing it. Ford is often pushing those out. Uh, and they're giving the car new features. They're not just like bug fixes and things. Um, that, and then once their driver assist tech comes up and uh, kind of proves itself, does a really good job. I know it'll be a little limited, um, but Highways is the main use case for it anyway. This thing is a real competitor, and Tesla wants this thing to sell well. They might not say it, um, but if this car does well, I mean, Tesla's winning. Tesla's doing exactly what they wanted. Uh, so it's, it's a really exciting time. A legacy auto manufacturer finally brought something to the table to directly compete with Tesla. They were kind of shooting some shots at them, you know, during the talk, which was pretty funny, uh, a little cringy, but <laughs> that's okay. Um, so thank you for watching this one. If I missed anything, leave it down in the comments. Let's have a discussion about this one. This is some exciting stuff. Uh, we're, we're seeing something big here. Um, so I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.